Question 1. What is the primary cause of botulism in food service? A. Undercooked meat. B. Contaminated water. C. Improperly canned foods. D. Unwashed fruits and vegetables. Answer. C. Improperly canned foods. Botulism is primarily caused by improperly canned foods, where the bacteria Clostridium botulinum thrives in anaerobic conditions and produces toxins. Question 2. Explain the relationship between time temperature abuse and bacterial growth. A. Bacteria grow slower at extreme temperatures. B. Bacteria grow most rapidly between 41 degree Fahrenheit and 135 degree Fahrenheit. C. Time temperature abuse has no impact on bacterial growth. D. Bacteria are only affected by time, not temperature. Answer. B. Bacteria grow most rapidly between 41 degree Fahrenheit and 135 degree Fahrenheit. Time temperature abuse, particularly when food is held between 41 degree Fahrenheit and 135 degree Fahrenheit, creates an environment conducive to rapid bacterial growth. Question 3. Identify the temperature range of the danger zone as defined by the FDA. A. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit. 0 degree Celsius to 21 degree Celsius. B. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit. 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. C. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius to 57 degree Celsius. D. 45 degree Fahrenheit to 120 degree Fahrenheit, 7 degree Celsius to 49 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius to 57 degree Celsius. The FDA defines the danger zone as the temperature range between 41 degree Fahrenheit and 135 degree Fahrenheit, where bacterial growth in food is most rapid. Question 4. What are the symptoms and common sources of Salmonella typhi? A. Nausea and undercooked chicken. B. Diarrhea and contaminated water. C. Vomiting and raw eggs. D. Fever and unwashed vegetables. Answer B. Diarrhea and contaminated water. Salmonella typhi commonly causes diarrhea and is often associated with contaminated water and food. Question 5. Describe the process of cross-contamination and how it can be prevented in a commercial kitchen. A. Transfer of bacteria from utensils to food. Prevent by using disposable utensils. B. Mixing of food flavors. Prevent by cooking foods separately. C. Transfer of pathogens from one surface or food to another. Prevent by using separate equipment and proper sanitation. D. Spoilage of food due to chemical reactions. Prevent by storing chemicals properly. Answer. C. Transfer of pathogens from one surface or food to another. Prevent by using separate equipment and proper sanitation. Cross-contamination is the transfer of harmful pathogens from contaminated surfaces or foods to uncontaminated ones and can be prevented with separate equipment and thorough sanitation. Question 6. Explain the importance of the Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point, HACCP, system in food safety. A. It focuses on the financial management of food costs. B. It's a guideline for food presentation and plating. C. It identifies and controls potential hazards in the food production process. D. It deals only with the storage of food. Answer. C. It identifies and controls potential hazards in the food production process. HACCP is crucial in food safety for systematically identifying, evaluating, and controlling hazards in the food production process. Question 7. Identify the correct steps for using a three-compartment sink. A. Rinse, wash, sanitize. B. Wash, rinse, air dry. C. Wash, rinse, sanitize. D. Sanitize, wash, rinse. Answer. C. 
Wash, rinse, sanitize. The proper steps for using a three-compartment sink are washing, rinsing, and then sanitizing. Question 8. What are the critical factors that influence microbial growth in food? A. Color, taste, and texture. B. Temperature, time, and humidity. C. Packaging, branding, and labeling. D. Price, availability, and popularity. Answer. B. Temperature, time, and humidity. Microbial growth in food is primarily influenced by temperature, time, and humidity. Question 9. Explain the role of a food safety manager in preventing foodborne illness outbreaks. A. Focuses on marketing and customer service. B. Manages food costs and inventory. C. Oversees food safety practices and staff training. D. Designs menus and food presentations. Answer. C. Oversees food safety practices and staff training. The food safety manager plays a crucial role in preventing foodborne illness outbreaks by overseeing food safety practices and conducting staff training. Question 10. Describe the proper method for calibrating a thermometer. A. Placing it in boiling water and adjusting to 212 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Celsius. B. Leaving it at room temperature for 24 hours. C. Using an ice water slurry and adjusting to 32 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius. D. Exposing it to direct sunlight for calibration. Answer. C. Using an ice water slurry and adjusting to 32 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius. The proper method for calibrating a thermometer is using an ice water slurry and adjusting it to read 32 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius. Question 11. What is the minimum internal cooking temperature for ground beef? A. 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. B. 155 degree Fahrenheit, 68 degree Celsius. C. 160 degree Fahrenheit, 71 degree Celsius. D. 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 160 degree Fahrenheit, 71 degree Celsius. The minimum internal cooking temperature for ground beef is 160 degree Fahrenheit to ensure it is safe to eat. Question 12. How should ready-to-eat foods be stored in relation to raw meats in a refrigerator? A. Below raw meats. B. Alongside raw meats. T. Above raw meats. D. In the same container as raw meats. Answer. C. Above raw meats. Ready-to-eat foods should be stored above raw meats in a refrigerator to prevent cross-contamination. Question 13. What are the major allergens identified by the FDA that must be declared on food labels? A. Caffeine, gluten, and corn syrup. B. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans. C. MSG, artificial colors, and preservatives. D sugar, salt, and trans fats. Answer B. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, and soybeans. These are the major allergens identified by the FDA that require declaration on food labels. Question 14. Explain the difference between cleaning and sanitizing. A. Cleaning removes grease, sanitizing removes crumbs. B. Cleaning removes visible soil. Sanitizing reduces pathogens to safe levels. C. Cleaning is done with water only. Sanitizing uses chemicals. D. Cleaning is a daily task. Sanitizing is weekly. Answer. B. Cleaning removes visible soil. Sanitizing reduces pathogens to safe levels. Cleaning involves removing dirt and debris, while sanitizing involves treating surfaces to reduce the number of pathogens to safe levels. Question 15. What is the best practice for thawing frozen meat? A. On a countertop at room temperature. B. Under warm running water. C. In the refrigerator or under cold running water. D. In a hot oven. 
Answer, C, in refrigerator or under cold running water. The best practices for thawing frozen meat include doing it in the refrigerator or under cold running water to prevent bacterial growth. Question 16. Describe the steps to be taken when a food handler has been diagnosed with a foodborne illness. A. Continue working but avoid handling food. B. Work in a different department until recovery. C. Exclude from work and report the illness to the local health department. D. Wear gloves and a mask while working. Answer. C. Exclude from work and report the illness to the local health department. A food handler diagnosed with a foodborne illness should be excluded from work and the illness reported to the local health department. Question 17. How can a food service operation ensure the effectiveness of its cleaning and sanitizing procedures? A. By using the strongest chemicals available. B. Through regular staff training and monitoring of cleaning practices. C. Cleaning only when visible dirt is present. D. Sanitizing once a week. Answer. B. Through regular staff training and monitoring of cleaning practices. Ensuring the effectiveness of cleaning and sanitizing procedures involves regular staff training and monitoring of the practices to maintain consistent standards. Question 18. What factors should be considered when developing a food recall plan? A. The popularity of the food item and cost implications. B. Identifying the affected product, notifying customers, and proper disposal. C. The impact on the restaurant's reputation. D. The preferences of the chef. Answer. B. Identifying the affected product, notifying customers, and proper disposal. A food recall plan should consider how to identify the affected product, notify customers, and properly dispose of or return the product. Question 19. Explain the importance of maintaining food at the correct fee level. A. It primarily affects the taste and appearance of food. B. Certain pathogens cannot grow in highly acidic or alkaline environments. C. It is only important for pickled foods. D. Fee levels determine the cooking time of food. Answer. B. Certain pathogens cannot grow in highly acidic or alkaline environments. Maintaining the correct fee level in food is crucial as certain pathogens cannot grow in environments that are too acidic or too alkaline. Question 20. What procedures should be followed for sanitizing utensils and equipment? A. Soaking in hot water for 30 minutes. B. Wiping with a dry cloth after use. C. Cleaning with soap and water, then applying a sanitizing solution. D. Rinsing with cold water only. Answer. C. Cleaning with soap and water, then applying a sanitizing solution. To properly sanitize utensils and equipment, they should first be cleaned with soap and water, followed by application of a sanitizing solution. Question 21. How should a foodborne illness complaint be handled by a food service manager? A. Disregard it as an isolated incident. B. Apologize, document the complaint, and conduct an investigation. C. Offer a discount to the affected customer. D. Wait for more complaints before taking action. Answer. B. Apologize, document the complaint, and conduct an investigation. A food service manager should handle a foodborne illness complaint by apologizing to the customer, documenting the complaint, and conducting a thorough investigation to identify and mitigate any potential food safety issues. Question 22. What is the significance of a material safety data sheet, MSDS, in a kitchen? A. It provides recipes and cooking techniques. B. It lists the nutritional information of ingredients. C. It details safety information about chemicals used in the kitchen. D. It is a record of employee attendance. Answer. C. It details safety information about chemicals used in the kitchen. An MSDS provides important safety information about chemicals, including potential hazards, handling instructions, and emergency procedures, which is crucial for maintaining a safe kitchen environment. Question 23. How can the risk of norovirus be reduced in a restaurant setting? A. By serving only raw foods. 
B. Through regular hand washing, proper cleaning, and excluding sick staff. C. Using plastic utensils instead of metal. D. Limiting the number of customers. Answer B. Through regular hand washing, proper cleaning, and excluding sick staff. Reducing the risk of norovirus involves maintaining high hygiene standards, including regular hand washing, proper cleaning and disinfection of surfaces, and excluding staff who are sick, especially those showing gastrointestinal symptoms. Question 24. Describe the best practices for hand washing stations in a commercial kitchen. A. Providing soap and air dryers only. B. Equipping with hot and cold running water, soap, and a way to dry hands. C. Using hand sanitizer as a substitute for washing. D. Placing hand washing stations outside the kitchen. Answer. B. Equipping with hot and cold running water, soap, and a way to dry hands. Best practices for hand washing stations in a commercial kitchen include providing hot and cold running water, soap, and a method for drying hands, such as paper towels or air dryers. Question 25. What are the guidelines for the safe use of food colorings and flavorings? A. Use liberally for enhanced taste and appearance. B. Avoid using any food colorings or flavorings. C. Follow manufacturer's instructions and regulatory guidelines. D. Use only natural colorings and flavorings. Answer. C. Follow manufacturer's instructions and regulatory guidelines. The safe use of food colorings and flavorings involves adhering to the manufacturer's instructions and regulatory guidelines to ensure consumer safety. Question 26. What steps should be taken if a customer reports a foreign object in their food? A. Ignore the report unless there is physical evidence. B. Blame the supplier or manufacturer. C. Apologize, remove the item, and report the incident for investigation. D. Offer a refund and ask the customer not to report it. Answer. C. Apologize, remove the item, and report the incident for investigation. When a customer reports a foreign object in their food, the appropriate response is to apologize, remove the item, and report the incident for further investigation to prevent future occurrences. Question 27. How does a food service manager ensure the safety of food during transportation? A. Transport all food at room temperature. B. Rely on the driver's discretion for food safety. C. Maintain proper temperatures and use insulated containers. D. Focus on speed of delivery over food safety. Answer. C. Maintain proper temperatures and use insulated containers. To ensure the safety of food during transportation, it's crucial to maintain proper temperatures using insulated containers to prevent the growth of harmful bacteria. Question 28. What are the key components of an effective pest control program? A. Frequent pesticide application. B. Maintaining a clean environment and sealing entry points. C. Using ultrasonic pest repellents. D keeping doors and windows open for ventilation. Answer. B. Maintaining a clean environment and sealing entry points. An effective pest control program involves maintaining a clean environment, properly storing food, and sealing potential entry points to prevent pests from accessing food and shelter. Question 29. Explain the process of conducting a food safety training session. A. Informal discussions during breaks. B. Comprehensive training covering all aspects of food safety. C. Only training new employees. D. Annual review through online videos. Answer. B. Comprehensive training covering all aspects of food safety. Conducting a food safety training session involves providing comprehensive training that covers all aspects of food safety, ensuring that staff are knowledgeable and can apply these practices in their daily work. Question 30. How can a restaurant effectively manage food inventory for safety? A. Ordering the same quantity of food regularly. B. Using the first in, first out, FIFO, method, and regular inventory checks. C. Stocking large quantities to reduce ordering frequency. D. 
Ignoring expiration dates to minimize waste. Answer B. Using the first in, first out, FIFO, method and regular inventory checks. Effective management of food inventory for safety involves using the FIFO method and conducting regular inventory checks to ensure freshness and reduce the risk of serving spoiled food. Question 31. What are the guidelines for serving food to vulnerable populations, for example, elderly, infants, A. Specializing in gourmet and exotic foods. B. Avoiding high-risk foods and ensuring proper cooking temperatures. C. Serving food in large portions. D. Focusing on presentation over safety. Answer. B. Avoiding high-risk foods and ensuring proper cooking temperatures. When serving vulnerable populations, it is important to avoid high-risk foods and ensure that food is cooked to appropriate temperatures to prevent foodborne illness. Question 32. How should a manager address a violation found during a health inspection? A. Contest every violation to protect the restaurant's reputation. B. Ignore minor violations. C. Take immediate corrective action and document changes. D. Wait for a written report before taking any action. Answer. C. Take immediate corrective action and document changes. A manager should address violations found during health inspection by taking immediate corrective action to rectify the issues and documenting these changes for future reference and compliance. Question 33. What are the consequences of not having an adequate hand washing station? A. Increased risk of foodborne illnesses due to poor hand hygiene. B. Minor inconvenience to staff. C. Only a slight increase in food preparation time. D. Reduced customer satisfaction. Answer. A. Increased risk of foodborne illnesses due to poor hand hygiene. Not having an adequate hand washing station can lead to poor hand hygiene among staff, increasing the risk of spreading foodborne illnesses. Question 34. How should a kitchen manage the use of food additives and preservatives? A. Avoid them entirely for natural cooking. B. Use any additives and preservatives as desired. C. Use according to regulatory guidelines and inform customers. D. Use only in high-end gourmet dishes. Answer. C. Use according to regulatory guidelines and inform customers. The use of food additives and preservatives in a kitchen should be in compliance with regulatory guidelines, and customers should be informed about their use, especially if they have allergies or dietary restrictions. Question 35. What is the procedure for safely using a blast chiller in a commercial kitchen? A. Chilling food until it feels cold to the touch. B. Using it to freeze food rapidly. C. Rapidly cooling food from 135 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit within two hours, then to 41 degree Fahrenheit or lower within four additional hours. D. Placing hot food directly from the stove to the chiller. Answer. C. Rapidly cooling food from 135 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit within two hours, then to 41 degree Fahrenheit or lower within four additional hours. The proper use of a blast chiller involves rapidly cooling hot food to save storage temperatures to minimize the time food spends in the temperature danger zone. Question 36. What are the requirements for ventilation and air quality in a commercial kitchen? A. Minimal ventilation to maintain heat. B. High quality air fresheners to improve air scent. C. Adequate ventilation to remove smoke, steam, and odors. D. Open windows as the primary source of ventilation. Answer. C. Adequate ventilation to remove smoke, steam, and odors. A commercial kitchen requires sufficient ventilation systems to effectively remove smoke, steam, odors, and other airborne particles, ensuring a safe and comfortable working environment. Question 37. How should a restaurant manage customer complaints about food quality or safety? A. By offering a discount on their next visit. B. Ignoring the complaints to avoid confrontation. C. 
listening actively, apologizing, and taking appropriate action to resolve the issue. D. Redirecting the blame to suppliers or staff. Answer. C. Listening actively, apologizing, and taking appropriate action to resolve the issue. Managing customer complaints about food quality or safety involves actively listening to the customer, apologizing for any issues, and taking appropriate action to address and resolve the concern. Question 38. What is the proper way to handle ice used for food preservation? A. Using the same ice for multiple purposes. B. Treating ice as a food item and ensuring it is not contaminated. C. Allowing ice to melt and refreeze for reuse. D. Using tap water to make ice regardless of water quality. Answer. B. Treating ice as a food item and ensuring it is not contaminated. Ice used for food preservation should be treated as a food item, which means it must be handled in a way that prevents contamination, similar to how other food items are handled. Question 39. How should live shellfish be stored to maintain safety? A. In aerated containers. B. At room temperature. C. Submerged in water. D. In self-draining containers at a temperature of 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, or lower. Answer. D. In self-draining containers at a temperature of 41 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius, or lower. Live shellfish should be stored in self-draining containers at a temperature of 41 degree Fahrenheit or lower to ensure their safety and quality. Question 40. Describe the appropriate attire for food handlers. A. Casual, comfortable clothing. B. Clean uniform, hair restraint, and closed toe shoes. C. Jewelry and watches to enhance personal hygiene. D. Gloves at all times, regardless of the task. Answer. B. Clean uniform, hair restraint, and closed toe shoes. The appropriate attire for food handlers includes a clean uniform, a hair restraint, such as a hair mitt or hat, and closed toe shoes to maintain hygiene and safety in the kitchen. Question 41. What are the legal responsibilities of a food service manager regarding food safety? A. Primarily focusing on customer service. B. Ensuring compliance with food safety laws and regulations. C. Prioritizing menu development over food safety. D. Delegating all food safety responsibilities to staff. Answer. B. Ensuring compliance with food safety laws and regulations. The legal responsibilities of a food service manager include ensuring that the establishment complies with all applicable food safety laws and regulations, and maintaining a safe environment for both customers and staff. Question 42. How should food be transported to maintain safety and prevent contamination? A. In open containers to ensure airflow. B. At room temperature for all types of food. C. In insulated containers at appropriate temperatures. D. Using the same containers for raw and cooked foods. Answer. C. In insulated containers at appropriate temperatures. To maintain safety and prevent contamination, food should be transported in insulated containers that keep it at appropriate temperatures, whether hot or cold, to inhibit bacterial growth. Question 43. What is the best practice for reheating food for hot holding? A. Reheating to 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, for 15 minutes. B. Reheating to 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degrees Celsius for at least 15 seconds within two hours. C. Reheating in a microwave oven only. D. Reheating at low temperatures over several hours. Answer. B. Reheating to 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degrees Celsius for at least 15 seconds within two hours. The best practice for reheating food intended for hot holding is to reheat it to an internal temperature of 165 degree Fahrenheit for at least 15 seconds within two hours, ensuring it is safe to eat. Question 44. How can time temperature abuse of food be prevented in a commercial setting? A. 
by cooking food at high temperatures for extended periods. B. Regularly monitoring food temperatures and minimizing time in the danger zone. C. Using only non-perishable food items. D. Storing all food items at room temperature. Answer. B. Regularly monitoring food temperatures and minimizing time in the danger zone. Time temperature abuse can be prevented by regularly monitoring food temperatures and ensuring that food does not remain in the temperature danger zone. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit for prolonged periods. Question 45. What are the critical control points in a standard kitchen? A. Points where financial losses can occur. B. Areas designated for staff breaks. C. Stages in a process where hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. D. Points where food is plated and presented. Answer. C. Stages in a process where hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. Critical control points in a standard kitchen are specific stages in the food handling process where potential hazards, such as microbial growth, can be effectively controlled to ensure food safety. Question 46. How should a food service establishment manage leftovers? A. Discard all leftovers to prevent foodborne illness. B. Store leftovers at room temperature for up to 24 hours. C. Properly cool, label, and store leftovers for safe reuse. D. Serve leftovers to staff only. Answer. C. Properly cool, label, and store leftovers for safe reuse. Leftovers should be properly cooled, labeled with the date, and stored at the correct temperatures to ensure they remain safe for consumption. Question 47. What are the procedures for managing a choking incident in a restaurant? A. Immediately perform abdominal thrusts without assessment. B. Offer water to the individual to help clear the obstruction. C. Call emergency services and follow the recommended first aid procedures if trained. D. Ask other customers to assist the individual. Answer. C. Call emergency services and follow the recommended first aid procedures if trained. In the event of a choking incident, the first step is to call emergency services. If trained, follow the recommended first aid procedures, such as the Hamlich maneuver, until help arrives. Question 48. What are the guidelines for proper waste disposal in a kitchen? A. Mixing all types of waste together for simplicity. B. Regularly removing waste and separating it into different types. C. Storing waste in food preparation areas for convenience. D. Disposing of waste only at the end of the week. Answer. B. Regularly removing waste and separating it into different types. Proper waste disposal in a kitchen involves regularly removing waste from the premises and separating it into different types, such as recyclables, compostables, and general waste, to maintain hygiene and reduce environmental impact. Question 49. How should a food service manager document food safety procedures and incidents? A. Through verbal reports and casual notes. B. By memory, without written records. C. Maintaining detailed written records and logs. D. Delegating documentation to junior staff. Answer. C. Maintaining detailed written records and logs. A food service manager should document food safety procedures and any incidents in detailed written records and logs to ensure traceability and accountability, and to facilitate continuous improvement in food safety practices. Question 50. What is the significance of maintaining proper humidity levels in food storage areas? A. It enhances the flavor of stored food. B. Prevents the drying out and hardening of food. C prevents the growth of mold and bacteria. D. Reduces electricity consumption. Answer. C. Prevents the growth of mold and bacteria. Maintaining proper humidity levels in food storage areas is crucial to prevent the growth of mold and bacteria, which can spoil food and pose health risks.